why the Prophet Muhammad couldn't have written the Quran. The Quran is a book over 600 pages long. It covers a wide range of topics and was revealed bit by bit over a period of 23 years. So if a man wrote the Quran, we already have a number of problems. If you're going to write a book like the Quran and claim it's from God, you can't make any mistakes. The book can't contradict itself and you have to keep it consistent as you add to it over a period of 23 years and keep the message consistent. The grammar and style also have to remain the same. If the Quran is not from God, Muhammad would have to write it himself. That means in the middle of the Arabian desert, with no books around and being illiterate, he would have to know law, civil rights law, criminal law, family law, labor law, military law, personal injury law, real estate law, and tax law. He would have to know history. With little to no Christian presence in Mecca, he would have to know the stories and events in the lives of the prophets before him, the history of past nations, Judeo-Christian religious rulings, and he would have to know it well enough to somehow offer additional information and details not found in those books. He would have to know how to develop a nation, how to start a government, know about worship and purification, invent dietary laws, know psychology, about raising children, arbitration, distribution of wealth, finance, and business. In the area of science, he would have to know embryology, oceanography, about plate tectonics, cloud formation, UV rays, know about plants, mountains, bees, the human brain, the Big Bang, and the expansion of the universe. And in order to make the book complete, he would have to have knowledge of the future so he can write things that will happen in the years to come. He would have to be a time traveler in order to insert his name and mention in the Bible. If he's claiming that the book he wrote is from God, it must not have a single solution that doesn't work. He must also keep his emotions and personal life out of the book. The book should not reflect happy times nor sad times in his life. The writing should not become cheerful and optimistic, nor sad and gloomy as if a human wrote it. But when you read the Quran cover to cover, you can't sense when his wife died, when his daughters got married, when his grandchildren were born, when he was victorious, and when he was defeated. To anyone who examines the Quran, it becomes perfectly clear that there is no way a man in the desert 1400 years ago could have written such a book. But what if it were a committee of brilliant minds, a secret society that is in charge of correcting, updating and rewriting the Quran over the years? Their job would be to make sure that the book appears to be accurate, has no mistakes or contradictions and to keep updating it to agree with science and the changing world. If that were the case, then there would be other versions of the Qur'an. Due to edits and improvements, we would have new edited versions and old versions with mistakes. You would be able to detect different writing styles and influences from the different authors. The problem with all of that is, there is only one Qur'an. So, one man didn't write it, and a committee didn't edit it, so where did it come from? What if clever devils dictated and influenced a man to write the Qur'an? The question then would be, what kind of devil calls to good behavior, worshiping God, honoring Jesus, giving to the poor, and warns of the devil? Any way you analyze the Qur'an, you come to a clear conclusion. It could not have been written by a committee, a devil, nor the Prophet Muhammad. Since it's impossible for Muhammad to have written it, then that means he was truthful in that it is from God. If it is from God, that means he was a genuine prophet. And if he's a genuine prophet, then his message should be heeded and obeyed.